Hello, everybody. This is another strange tale of the open stage. Amazingly enough, this one was very difficult because y'all asked me to give you the tale of the open stage about the can't, can't dance. Unfortunately, I had to dig way back into the annals of open stage history to get the actual story behind the can't, can't dance. And it turns out it's extremely interesting. So I will read it to you now. Gather ye round and sit for a time as I confound your reason with the style of my rhyme, bringing joy to the masses with a twitch of my tail, or what passes for such penned with little travail. The story is famous and starts in a land ruled by King Russ's quite whimsical hand. He was jolly and just, so said all, or he reigned, and he had but one vice, he must be kept entertained. He held in his court once a week, I would gauge, a festival feast that he called open stage, and demanded all manner of talented folk to come entertain him. No, really, no joke. <laughs> King Russ brought them in from East Asia to France, and his only demand, they do some sort of dance. King Russ was obsessed, so they say, with one thing. Only one form of art was deemed fit for this king. He would shout, I need movement. I need movement. To please me, you know. To him, other talents would not make the show. So in all they came, so graceful of foot, at first no two the same, and King Russ thought it quite good. He laughed and he clapped as the dancer spun round. <laughs> And when they ran out of dances, the king felt left down. He needed new dances, new choreography. To witness new dances, he offered a rich fee. Many came to collect it, but they were all routine. None could show the sad king some dance that he'd not seen. The land felt the weight of the mad ruler's peak. The fields all fell fallow. The outlook looked bleak. The kingdom was doomed and the people were crushed. Was there no one at all who would dance for King Russ? Well, then up to the castle there strolled a smart gent with a book in his hand and a quill slightly bent. He smiled wide in a greeting as the guards barred the way and he cheerily wished them a happy good day. They looked at the man with small hope in their chests. They knew all the dancers from worst to the best and this man was none of them, so each drew their sword but before they could skewer him, he claimed the reward. They sat back on their heels, which in fact is a feat that occurs when one's taken a backness completes. Their churro so discomfited, with mouths open wide, they were so nonplussed, they just let him inside and left the gate open so it could be shown. Their plight may be over if this dance wasn't known. The king took the throne and the stage was soon cleared and the look on his face caught between hope and fear. You might wonder aloud how that look, so see here, his beard hung straight down, eyebrows straight out to here. <laughs> he had anticipation but would not be impressed and reward any comer even if smartly dressed. I've seen every dance, said King Russ with a sigh. So what is the name of your dance, unknown guy? The man bowed a low, bending straight at the, at the waist. Ah, oh, King Russ, my dance will be just right for your taste. It shall so entertain you, you'll be quite entranced. The name of my talent is the We Can't Can't Dance. <laughs> I think I fathom the nature, Russ said. As a master of dances, this does not pass over my head. One must simply break down a dance name to surmise. The steps in the pattern cannot be disguised. Beginning with we, I envision small steps taken quite quickly, then japes and then jests that lean bodies over from east to the west. This would explain the canting part best. The man seemed about to negate with his head, but King Russ rambled on and he nodded instead. His grin was sincere, but chagrin held there too. You are truly a king of all dance. Can't fool you. <laughs> so knowing its nature, my liege, oh so keen, do you think this is dance I have named? Have you seen? The king smiled with interest and said, I think not. 
If I like your new dance, the reward's what you got. And if not, well, your prospects may not be so hot. So bring the musicians and give it a shot. The musicians streamed in. They all filed to their place, to the port of the stage, where there was a large space. But the gent said, away with a wave of his hand. I've no need for your majesty's left of stage band. I've my own musician, so please give him a hand. And into the room strode a man none did know. He carried a bass on his shoulder, a crow. He walked to the far starboard edge of the stage and began plucking and slapping in musical rage. The music went on, shifting tempos and beat while the crowd were all moving. The king stomped his feet. At last, all exhausted, the music subsides as the notes trailed away. Ah, Sir Crow, they all cried. King Russ was delighted, his face all aflush. That musical pre-show, it gave him a rush. From the top of his crown to his opulent pants, King Russ was well primed for the start of this dance. So in came a duo with grace and sensation. They flipped and they twisted in bright syncopation. One blonde and one dark, one female, one male. But they had one thing in common. Each trick did they nail. Their balance exquisite, their strength was immense. The flow of their movements, breathtaking, intense. The king with eyes wide, watching each pose and stance. He had not seen the like of this we can't can't dance. He roared with approval and clapped with the rest. Then he stopped and he frowned. Is this some sort of jest? No music was playing while the canting was on. Was Sir Crow just for show? Where's all the sound gone? At that moment, Sir Crow came to life and was heard. As the sound drummed a cadence, the crowd gave him the bird. Cry to the rooftops, Sir Crow, they all chanted. The king settled in to watch the dance as it canted. Somewhere in the shuffle, the two dancers had vanished. No one was quite sure after just how it was managed. Two new dancers appeared, but then out went the lights, and the canting shown next seemed like some sort of fight. One dancer with a hoop lit around with a glow, spun and dipped towards her partner, and oy, what a show! Her mate held a staff with strange luminescence, and he twirled it and stabbed it with vigor and presence. Each blow never fell as the pair interleaved. The dance was hypnotic, this wee cant that they weaved. The music in motion then trailed away, and the now silent king, he had nothing to say. But before they relaxed or could draw a fresh breath, a sound filled the hall, sweet as spring, pale as death. A woman was there, and her voice had replaced the hoop can't can't dancer and partner she'd faced. Now the light was shown on the blonde woman who sang, and her words moved their hearts, their very ears, how they rang. She sang them a song of love and of loss, of dreams and of dreamers, of gold and of dross. Her song rose and fell, and each listener did wave, their bodies from each side to side in a rave. The king held his throne, but to all was apparent. The king longed to dance to the song, was apparent. His eyes filled with tears and he held up his hand. No more of the we can't can't dance can I stand. Never have I seen such a dance so complex. I must to you, sir, offer all my respect. Your claim to the reward is quite righteous and just. Will you please come and dance in a week? Oh, you must. The man with a bow and with some trepidation said, King Russ, I must offer a short explanation. You see, the wonders you witnessed and loved at first glance, they really were not, in full truth, a real dance. You seem so unhappy and need some diversion, so your court's wisest mind sought me out in subversion. They asked me to bring you a grand sort of show without any dancing, just so you would know. That dance is an art that is lovely and pure, but there are many talents that can offer you cure. You can see a new show every week, can't you see? The secret, dear King, is called variety. <laughs> King Russ sat quite still and just looked all around. His face was a mask, not a smile, not a frown. He made talking motions, but no sound came out. His guards waited ready for a most angry shout. But a huge happy laugh was then all that burst free. King Russ said, 
I concede, you are right, I agree. I will watch each, uh, bring out your axe, no matter the type. I will watch each to see if it equals its hype. You have shown me my error, we have an accord. You, sir, have quite earned it, you have the reward. So the gent was rewarded, his show of success, and my story is done. Out of words, I confess.